Mark chapter number 5. If you're there, say amen. amen. Stand with me and we're going to read and then I'm going to preach like a wild man here in about just, just about two minutes. So y'all stay, stay with me now. Mark chapter number 5. Or I'm sorry, Mark chapter number 6. I'm just, I'm just, just turn anywhere and we're going to read. It's all good. Amen. Mark chapter number 6. Look with me down at verse number 35. And when, they, and when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place. And now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into a country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. And he answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread and give them to eat? And he, he saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see and when they knew, they say five and two fishes. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, and, and let me just stop and just throw this in there. If you read all four of the Gospels, you'll find that even the disciples didn't have nothing. They didn't have these five loaves and two fishes. They was a, they was a lad there that day who had packed him a sack lunch and had brought it with him. And uh, the disciples found the little boy that had his lunch and they, 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 they said, Can the Lord borrow your lunch? And uh, the little boy gave the disciples, so the disciples, and I, and I know Mark didn't put that in here, but, but uh, other gospels tell us uh, a little bit, so when you read them all, you get the full story. And so here they've borrowed a little boy's lunch, and now the Lord's about to break this bread and feed this big multitude. We're going to find out how many there are here in just a But verse 41, and when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed them to his disciples, or I blessed and break the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all, and they did all eat and were filled. They didn't have to ration nothing off. And they took up twelve baskets full of fragments and of the fishes. Now look here. And they did eat, and they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men that day. You can be seated this morning. 5,000 men, and that's not including the women and the children. Well, somebody said one time, uh, you can't prove that there was women and children there. Well, where did he get the lunch to start with? He got it from a young boy. Amen. So they had to be some children there. And, they, and if they was children, you know how we men are. You get us around kids. They've got to be a woman involved somewhere. Or the kid will end up uh, getting hurt. So they, they had to be more than just men there. But they counted the men. So if every man had a wife, that's 10,000 people. And if they had two kids apiece, that's uh, nearly 20,000 people. Uh, uh, that The Lord took this small little lunch. And we talk about so often, and when we get up to preach about the Lord, we, we talk about the grand things that he did. We talk about the great things that he did. We talk about the glorious things that he did. And all those things are true because he is the God of creation this morning. Now, the Lord is the man, or he is God, that walked out into nothing, grabbed a hold of nothing, and spoke everything into existence that you and I see around about us. He is the God. God of a creation. He is the one that reached down into the dust of the earth and, and with that dust he formed man and then later on he put man to sleep and took a rib out of man's side and, and made one man so that man would have to be alone. I mean he is the God of creation and when we look at creation it is grand, it is great and it is glorious. I begin to think about how he is the God of revelation. 
And not only is he the God of creation, he's the God of revelation. He is the God that used human vessels to let us know or hear his word. And moreover, he also used human vessels to preserve his word. And I believe by faith God has given us his word. The Bible, and I say this a lot, it doesn't contain the word of God, no. The Bible is the word of God. And I believe this book that we have this morning, it is the preserved, inerrant, inspired, infallible word of God. And God did that through human vessels so that we would know and have a copy of his perfect word this morning. He is the God of revelation. And that is a grand and glorious and great thought this morning. He's the God of salvation. And we don't have to spend a lot of time here, but it was God. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. And that means he loved sinners. He loved you and I that were marred by Adam's fall. When we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were aliens and we were alienated from God, God loved us and he sent his only begotten son into this world that we might have everlasting life. And I'm glad, listen, it wasn't just for a few that was chosen, but I'm glad it's a whosoever will way. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'm glad when you get saved, there's a record kept in heaven and God, his only begotten son that died for you, then gets his record book when you get saved and he writes your name down in heaven and that is a record that your name can never be taken out of. I'm glad this morning that salvation is eternal and it is no merit of our own. We are saved by the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ. I'm glad Brother Bill I didn't have to buy my salvation. I'm glad I didn't have to work for my salvation. I'm glad I'm not having to work to keep my salvation. My, my entire salvation is hinged on Jesus Christ this morning and so is yours. If you've been saved by the grace of God, you're not saved by anything you've ever done outside of exercising faith which was given to you by God and you have exercised faith in the cross, the blood, the resurrection of Jesus and then you are sealed unto the day of redemption. We don't work to keep our salvation. We don't work to be saved. I'm just thankful it's all what God did. Amen. Amen. And when we think about him being the God of salvation, that is a glorious thought. That is a great thought. That is a, a, a grand thought. We, we look at these things, the creation and the revelation and, and salvation, and we see that God, uh, uh, there's so many things that's contained in this in this Bible this morning about God doing great things and God doing big things. The Bible tells us that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above that which we can ask or even think. We do serve a great big God. We serve a glorious God. We serve a grand God and beside him there is none other. He is the only one true and living God. Amen. Amen. And so we could even take our text this morning and we could talk about the grand and the glorious and the great thought how that Jesus took five hush puppies and two fish and fed 5,000 men, not including the women and the children. But I want us to look this morning 
at this thought, the Lord of the little things. And this morning we come to church so often times and, and I know in my, when I study, I, I like to read about the miraculous things that the Lord's done and, and the miraculous things that take to, ha, had taken place in the Old Testament and, and the miraculous things that have taken place in the New Testament and, and they're innumerable throughout the scriptures. I'm, but I'm glad we, that we serve a God that he's not only Lord in the big things, uh, uh, but I'm glad we serve in the God of the little things as well. And so I want us to notice this morning from these verses that we read and give you some examples and some places where God is Lord over the little things in our lives. First of all, I, I want you to notice He is the Lord of your little fears. I, I want you to notice the, the context, the people, they follow Jesus to the other side of a lake and Jesus has spent the day preaching to them and teaching them and, and now the hour is growing late and, and the disciples are a lot like a lot of Baptists in our day and, and they say Lord you've been preaching too long we need to let this people go they've got to go eat and that's how we are a lot of times and I've been on the other side and I've thought the same thing that you think a lot of times see anytime I get up to preach Brother Bill it only feels like 10 minutes when it's really been about an hour I, I, but it don't seem long to me because the Bible says or the Bible doesn't say but but people say uh, that time flies when you're having fun. I love preaching, uh, but here in the in the text we we see that the disciples they come to the Lord and say, Lord, you need to let these people go uh, so that they can go into the villages and they can find them something to eat because everything's going to close if you don't if you don't close. And now y'all have thought that or you've thought on Sunday nights, preacher. If you don't get done, Shawnee's going to close the door and we ain't going to be able to go. And then there's been times on Sunday mornings you've thought, preacher, if you don't hush, we're going to be last in line at, at, at lunchtime. Well, that's how the disciples were. But I want you to notice these men, these men were afraid. Now, we're going to look at this from a little different view, okay? So y'all stay with me, but it's still Bible. These men were afraid that the people wouldn't be able to find food to eat if the hour grows any later than what it is right now. Evidently, they were, they were all tired and hungry themselves, and they assumed that all the people must be as well. After all, this crowd that Jesus is preaching to has followed him from one side of the lake to the other. I mean, they, they, they've marched, and they've listened, and they've been there all day long. And the disciples look to Jesus, and they say, Lord, you've preached long enough. Dismiss this service so we can go find some food. The disciples are filled with fear. If Jesus keeps on preaching, this crowd's going to go hungry, and they ain't going to get a bite to him. Now let me now, now, now let's examine this. We oftentimes we look over this and we, we we just read right over it. But these disciples, they've got some little fears. It's not it's nothing major. It's nothing big. These people ain't going to die. They ain't starving. All they're worried about is making sure that the crowd has something to eat. It's a little fear. So often we come to church and we hear the preacher gets up and he preaches on all of our big fears. And we preach on and and and, and we preach on those circumstances that you're faced with that may be life altering. We preach about Brother Bill when you're going to get the next phone call in the wee hours of the night that'll change your life. Uh, or we preach about when the doctor's going to come in and tell you news uh, that'll change your life. We preach about uh, uh, the situations that you're going to face that's going to be life altering. But can I remind us all this morning? That the Lord is still, He's still God over them little things in your life. Amen. I mean, I'm talking about them things that ain't going to change your life. They're not going to be life altering. But I'm talking about them little passing thoughts. I know we've all got them and you, you've got them. I've got them. I mean, you may come in here this morning and say, Preacher, my life is, is pretty well. It's smooth sailing where I'm at and, and I'm not facing no big decisions and I'm not facing no uh, big circumstances but I just wanted to remind us all that we're serving a God that He's Lord over even the little small things in our life. Amen. I'm talking about them little things we don't really necessarily take 
to Him. The Bible says this, Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. So many times we see the God of the big things. We look back over our lives and we see when God has intervened in big ways. There's been times some of you have been at the doctor and the doctors gave you some bad news to start with and then the Lord, the great physician, he's intervened and then you've come out on the other side and it wasn't nowhere near as bad as what the doctors thought it was going to be or you've got news and phone calls and, and circumstances that have presented themselves and, and, uh, and, and God's intervened and you see all those things and we, we praise God for all of those things but sometimes we just need to praise God that he's still Lord over our just living no fears from day to day. Because see, what happens is your testimony may not be the same as the person sitting beside you. And what happens is if you don't have some big big place in your life where God's moved a mountain or God's parted the Jordan for you, uh, then you don't feel like you can praise God because your life don't line up with their life. Uh, but there's a God in heaven that's working in all your little situations uh, uh, just like God's working in their big situations. Uh, and God's Lord over your little fears uh, uh, the same way as God is Lord over their big fears. Uh, and so God loves you just as much as He does anybody else. Because he's Lord over the little fears. You know, God, and the, Jesus in our text, he took notice of their little fears. But you notice this, and I'm paraphrasing. The disciples come to him, and the Lord tells them, well, first of all, he says, Lord, the disciple does, it comes before Jesus. He said, Lord, this problem is greater than we are. That's what fear causes. That's, that's the cause of fear is we are facing something that's greater than us. And they feel like they can't do anything about it. And then they say, we don't think you can handle it. And we feel like you need to send this crowd away before it becomes a problem. Now, let me, let me show you here. When they come to him with this petition, it gets his attention. And we're going to get into that, that thought here in just a moment. I want to show you. In verse number 37, he answered and said unto them, Give them to eat. In other words, he notices their little fears. You know what Jesus could have said? He could have said, look here, just send them away. Or he could have ignored his disciples and told them, oh ye of little faith. Or, oh ye of little patience. Or, oh ye of little hearing. Or, oh ye of a little y'all just whatever. He, he could have said whatever he wanted to, but instead he took notice of their little fear. I'm trying to get us to understand this morning that, that it doesn't matter what you're facing. It may be something big but then you may be here this morning, it may be something little. God still cares about your little fears. Amen. Secondly, we see He's the Lord of little faith. Now here's where a lot of us will fit in too, because and I'm talking about me, myself, and I. I, Brother Bill, struggle sometimes with worrying. Amen. I'll be honest, I struggle with worrying. I mean, I can read something on the internet about your health and I will immediately think I've got that. I can't help it. It's just the way I'm wired. I, I, I try, but, but I, get on, I get to Googling things and I, uh, little things will pop up. I had a bug bite one time and I, and I swear I thought I was coming down with leprosy. That's just how I am. And I worry about things. As a matter of fact, Brother Ron called yesterday morning about 8 o'clock. I was still sound asleep because I had been up all night worrying about yesterday. I didn't. I quit looking at the clock at four <laughs> yesterday morning, the other morning before the 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 thing yesterday, fall festival. And Brother Bill, I stayed up all night worrying about the weather and wor 
worrying about things that were out of my control. I can't change the weather. I, I prayed real hard, uh, but I worry about things. And, and, and I struggle sometimes with having little faith. And you, and you do too at times. But I'm glad he's Lord over our little, ch little faith. When Jesus hears the fears of his men, he says to them, well, you feed them. If they're hungry, give them something to eat. Now, I want you to notice, and you got to, Philip is the one that's talking. You got to go to John chapter 6, verse 7 to find out who's talking. But Philip, it is, speaks up and says, Lord, it'd take us, we'd, we'd need 200 penny worth of bread. Now, a penny worth, if you do the, study on it, is a denarius. A denarius is a day's wage. 200 days wage is what Philip said. Lord, even if we had 200 days worth of wages, we still couldn't feed this crowd. Now, let's look at that in modern day terms. If we had a crowd of 5,000, what Philip is saying is three, it would take 365 days in a year, 200 of them, that's nearly three quarters of a year. The average salary and I'm talking average this morning, in the state of Tennessee, is probably around thirty-five dollars to $40,000. So, Brother Bill, you're looking at about twenty dollars to $22,000 is what Philip is stating they would need in order to feed a crowd that size. 5,000 men, not including the women and the children. And so what Philip is saying is, is Philip is telling the Lord, Lord, we don't have enough. Even if we have $20,000, we still would not be able to feed this crowd. Well, I'm thankful that the Lord doesn't look at us and say, now there were times that the Lord looked at his disciples and said, oh, ye of little faith. There are some times where the Lord will get on to us about that. But on this occasion, he didn't. He didn't scold his disciples. He didn't beat and browbeat and beat down and belittle his disciples because of their lack of faith. He just said, feed them. And Philip said, we don't have the resources. This problem, again, is bigger than us. And, it, and in reality, they're thinking that it's bigger than God. Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever had a genuine need and the Lord ever fail you? Not one time. Have you ever, have you ever in your lifetime looked back over your life and there have been a time when the Lord didn't supply what you... I'm not talking about what you wanted. Lord, if we all got what we wanted... We'd, be, we'd all be living a little higher on the hog, as they say. Brother Bill, if I got everything I wanted, I'd be spooled rotten. If I got everything I wanted, and, and listen, I ain't talking about our wants this morning, but, but you honestly, in your, in your heart of hearts and, and your mind, look back over your life and see if there ever been a time when the Lord hadn't met your need in spite of your little faith. I've been there. He's Lord over our little faith. But you know what Matthew says. Matthew 17, 20. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. The mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds. Little old tiny thing. He said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now look here. When I pastored in Bethabara, in Cherokee, North Carolina, we would have to get up on Sunday morning, and we'd make that journey across that mountain. And there's a lot of times, Brother Bill, I'd be at the base of that mountain going through Gatlinburg, and I'd say, get out of my way. Yeah. Because see, it had only been like a 20-minute trip from Gatlinburg to Cherokee, North Carolina. But I'd look at that mountain and I'd say, get out of my way! And it never would move. You know what that tells me? My faith ain't even as big as a mustard seed. Because if our faith was as big as a mustard seed, we'd say to the mountain, be thou removed, and it'd go over yonder. But the Lord says, if you had faith 
as a grain of my... I, I, I like what the father of the demon-possessed child said. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Lord, I do believe, but help thou my unbelief. The Bible says this, But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave in the sea, driven with a wind tossed. For let not man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. But God will honor your little faith. He's God over the little things in your life. He's God over your little fears. He's still God over your little faith. And there's so many times that we worry about things and we allow those things. But God knoweth our frame. That's what the Bible says. He knoweth our frame. He knoweth that we are but dust. God knows who we are. He knows what we are. And He knows that when our worries come, it comes because we're made up a body of sinful flesh. He's not forgotten that. He's not, hey listen, you may be here this morning and you're worried about stuff in your life. You're worried about uh, the things that you have no control over. And, uh, but God understands and He knows and He still cares even though you may lack some faith. So He's Lord over the little faith. Then he's Lord over little food. Now here's, a, here's one. I know I got to hurry at 12.03, but, but, but I, I don't know about you, but I, I have good liberty and I'm enjoying this. Amen. He's Lord over little food. I want you to notice what he did. He took five loaves of bread and two fish. And, he, and, he, and the Bible said he blessed it and he began to break it. And he break it and when he break it, he began to give it. And what happened was on this day, he took just a little old handful of a lad's lunch and he began to bless it and break it and gave it and he continued to break it and gave it and he continued to break it and give it and he just continued on to take that little old lunch and break it and give it. And I'm glad this morning God can take the little things in our life and make something out of it. Say, so, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, some of you all worry about your finances. My wife worries about our finances. She, she worries about finances like I worry about health. She does. And being in the banking world and working in that atmosphere, it makes her aware of things. But there ain't been one time, Brother Bill, that God ain't met our needs when it comes to our finances. She said, how, did, how does he do it? Well, he breaks it and he gives it. How does he do it? He breaks it and he gives it. And, and he'd take five loaves and two fish and feed 5,000. Folks, some, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to say it. Some of y'all may worry about our finances around here. I know we had to cut a big check here recently to get our parking lot fixed. It, it cost us a little bit to have our fall festival, and some of y'all may get tore up about that. And you may wonder and say, Preacher, I don't know what we're going to do financially. We've got missionaries we're supporting now, and, you, and what, what, what are we going to do? We've got to get, a, we got to get this budget together, and we got to, we got to stick to the, you know what the Lord's going to do? He's going to break it, and He's going to give it. Hey, you know how God's going to meet our needs? He's going to break it and He's going to give it. Hey, you want to know how God's going to supply the needs of the church? He's going to break it and He's going to give it. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to stop worrying about God and, and the finances. Because He's going to break it and He's going to give it. If He can take five loaves and two fish and feed a big multitude of people, I believe He can take care of Solway Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. There may be some of you this morning, you worrying about the little things in your life. You, you feel like you don't amount to nothing. You feel like you, listen, I was flying over states. Thinking about this, I'm just telling my story because I don't know yours. I was flying over states, Brother Bill. And I was, I was looking down as we was going to Washington State. And it was a nighttime flight. So as you're flying, if you've never flown before, it, uh, it, it's amazing when you get up there and fly on a good clear night and you're looking down at those cities and you're seeing these big old, these big just, just places where it's lit up. and it, I mean, it's beautiful. I love looking down at those lights as we fly over that at night. Brother Bill, it just come to my mind. Here I am. I'm just a nobody from Sevierville, Tennessee. 
I'm a backwoods country. They, they make fun of me everywhere I go for how I talk. People ask me repeatedly, can you repeat that word and say it again? Because we just like to hear you talk. I ain't been to Bible college. I don't have some fancy degree to hang on the wall, Brother Ron. I, I, I don't know a whole lot about the scriptures. Everything I've learned, I've had to learn by the school of hard knocks. What I've learned about preaching and what I've learned about pastoring what not to do because I did it. And uh, listen, I've made mistakes along the way, but here I, I sat in that airplane, that Boeing 737, uh, looking out that window and thought, man alive, God's been good to me. Uh, he's took some little old preacher and now I'm getting to fly across the country and preach the gospel. Uh, and now let me just preface that by saying there ain't nowhere in the world I'd rather preach than right here at Solway. But it was amazing flying across the country looking down, thinking, little old me, God's using me. And you say, preacher, what's that supposed to be? I'm not bragging this morning. I ain't got nothing to brag about. I ain't boasting. It just, God blessed my heart by bringing that to my thought. But you all this morning, you may feel insignificant, and you may feel little, and you may feel like you're not wanted or not needed or not appreciated. But let me say, it doesn't matter who you are in this church. It doesn't matter what you, I don't know what anybody gives. I don't care what you give financially to this church. I don't care what position you hold. I, I don't care how often you sing. I, I don't care. Listen, none of that matters. Uh, what I'm trying to get us to understand is, is God is Lord over them little things. And you may feel little this morning. You may feel insignificant. Uh, you may feel like you don't hold a big role. Uh, but just being here is a blessing uh, to God. Amen. 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 He's Lord over, over the, little, the little food. God can take the little things and make something big. And lastly, I'm closing with this. And Miss Vicki, if you become the piano. And I like this one. I, I got this message together and, and we was coming up the road this morning. We got hung up in a wreck right, out, right, right off the road where we live. I had to turn around. I had the road shut down. I had to go a different direction. And, and I was riding to church and I had all this and this come to my heart on, on the ride to church this morning. He's Lord over our little fears. He's Lord over our little faith. He's Lord when it comes to little food. He can take little as much when God's in it. He can take little things and make big things out of them. But I want you to notice this, and don't you ever forget this. If you're, if you're a member, if you ain't a member, or you're considering becoming a member, I want you to remember this. Mark it down. Write it down. This may go on our church sign this week. He's Lord over the little flock. Amen. But you notice what they did in the text. The Lord told them they were 5,000 that was gathered, gathered together. But before... He was able to bless, break, and distribute the food. He got them separated into little ranks of 150s. There's a 50 over here. There's a 100 group right here. There's a 50 group over here and a 100 group over here. So oftentimes we're looking for that 5,000, that, just that one big congregation slew of people. But, but before God could do anything, He had to get them separated up into little groups and so He could minister to them. Now, listen here this morning. We may not be the biggest congregation in Knox County, Tennessee. And we do. I'm, I'm learning. I've been hard-headed about it, but I am learning that we have to... I mean, it is. It, there's an aspect. When people come to your church... And they looking at your church and they 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 looking at the ministries of your church. There's an aspect where people want to know what it is they can be involved in. How can they get their kids involved? My mentality has been an old fashioned, you know, way of looking at things, and I believe it's right. I believe the first thing you ought to offer any child is the gospel. But there's good ways of doing it. There's various ways of doing it. 
I've always been one if they ask me, what do we got for them preaching? I believe that's an aspect of it, but, they, but people, they want to see what you have to offer. But I want us to know this morning, we may not have as much to offer right this moment as the church down the road. We may not have the biggest congregation, biggest number of people. But don't you ever forget this. God is still God over the little flocks. He's still Lord. We mean, Brother Bill, we mean just as much to God. And I want this recorded. I want it put on. And you say, you're getting, you're getting, I am like a bainy rooster. I'm going to pooch my chest out when I say this. We mean just as much to God as, te as Temple Baptist Church. And I know they're the biggest church in the county nearly, but we mean just as much to God as that big church down the road. God takes just as much notice in us being a little small congregation like we are. And I know we don't have uh, all the ministries and all the nice facilities that they've got, but we mean just as much to God, uh, as, what God uh, as what they do. Because he's Lord over them little flocks too. And so this morning as we stand... He is Lord. And there may be areas in your life where you find yourself fearing things that are out of your control. Fearing things that are above your means. Fearing things that you can't do nothing with. Why don't you come and bring them to the Lord of the little fears? Say, preacher, my, my problems ain't like other people's problems. He's still Lord over your little problems. The same as He's Lord over other people's big problems. Say, preacher, I'm struggling with little faith this morning. A lot of times we know that God is able. We just ain't so sure if He's willing. Yeah, let's be honest. A lot of us, we know that we serve a God that is able. We just wonder if He will. We know He loves us. We know He cares about us. But sometimes we just wonder if He will move in our situation. We have a lack of faith that He will do. And you may be struggling this morning with worrying about your faith. He said if you have faith as a grain of mustard. See, that ain't much. And the Lord ain't mad at you because you worry. He knows who you are. He knows what you are. And he's Lord over the little food. He's Lord over the little flock. And I thank God for that this morning. Don't you ever let the devil discourage you. Man, it's easy, especially my position, and we're done. But it's easy sometimes to get discouraged. As much effort yesterday, it'd be easy to come in here this morning and think, man, we, we invited all them people and got to meet all them people, got to talk to all them people, and yet, yet we don't see the results right offhand. But Brother Robbie told a story at this church, Brother Robbie Burton, when he was preaching, and I'm reminded of this. I'm going to say this, and then we're going, we're going to dismiss. Here's how God works. There's a little boy one time, he'd went out and got him a put it in a glass jar. And he was going to make it a pet. And he took it to school with him. He had it stuffed down in his overall bibs. And he got in class that day and opened that lid up, going to play with that bee 
thinking it would stay down in that jar. And about the time he took the lid off of that, he, that bee went down the backside of his bibs and he got to squirming and a squalling. And the teacher yelled at him and said, Hey, what's going on? He said, Teacher, there's something happening back here that you don't know nothing about. <laughs> Let me say this morning, a lot of times we are on the little end of something big. And what we did yesterday, you have no idea what may come of it later on. Because these things that God's doing right now in the hearts of individuals, there's people, I am a firm believer, and I'll keep saying this, our best days are yet ahead of us. We're just on the little end of something big. And God, a lot of times, is doing things we don't know nothing about. 